The original Highlander was released in 1986. Connor McLeod won the prize and lived happily ever after with Brenda, or so we thought. The slogan for the film was, there can be only one. There should be only one, is more to the point. So why the hell did they conjure up this pile of confusing crap called Highlander 2 The Quickening, which was released in 1991? And for the film's narrative, they have totally disregarded the first film with its origins of where the Immortals came from. In the first film, the Immortals are just born different. In this one, they are from a different planet entirely called Zeist. They are sent to Earth as punishment, and here they become immortal. They have to fight to the death until only one remains. When they win the prize, they have the choice to stay on Earth and grow old or return to Zeist. What the hell is going on? Did they really think fans of the original was going to swallow that pile of shit? Being born different and not knowing why was one of the reasons that made the original so appealing. As Conor McLeod said in the original film, it's a kind of magic. The arc of the story, as well as the script, has more holes in it than St Andrew's golf course. I'm not going to torture myself and you the viewer with how much this film does not make sense on so many levels. I will leave it up to you to decide. The moment anyone has an idea for a Highlander sequel, it doesn't make any difference in the slightest, no matter who stars in it, how good the special effects are, and even if the story has more twists than a corkscrew, it's doomed to fail. It's staggering on how they managed to make three more sequels, of which none of them are connected to number two, and are progressively worse than the last. Highlander Endgame was the best of the sequels, but that's not saying much in the end. And don't even get me started on the series they brought out in the 90s, with Adrian Paul as Duncan McLeod, or even the animated series for that matter. They saturated and drained any originality the first film had, which is such a shame, but then it shows the greed in Hollywood. It is rumoured that director Russell Mulcahy hated the theatrical release of Highlander 2, so much that he walked out only 15 minutes into the film at the world premiere. Christopher Lambert threatened to walk out before production was due to start, but stayed due to contract obligations. Christopher Lambert is great. There will only ever be one Highlander. Virginia Madsen, also in Clive Barker's Candyman as the love interest, is okay. The villain, General Katana, is only notable because of the ever so watchable Michael Ironside. In my opinion, he gave his best performance in David Cronenberg's Scanners as Daryl Revick. Besides that, the character is not very memorable at all. Katana's henchmen, Corda and Reno, with their pale pointed faces and bird-like hair, are interesting to look at, but alas, just like Katana, they are both quickly forgotten. Sean Connery's return as Ramirez was a big mistake. I mean, why? He died. Pretty much sure there's no coming back from decapitation. Connery is not the best actor anyway. He played a Scottish Russian in the 1990 adaptation of Tom Clancy's The Hunt for Red October, and an Irish Scot in Brian De Palma's The Untouchables in 1987. In Highlander, he plays an Egyptian immortal who's over 2,000 years old, so I guess his accent can be forgiven in that role. I mean, yes, if the performance is good, you can overlook that to some degree. But for every film he's in, please, it's too distracting. Well, for me anyway. My guess is the producers knew they had to bring people into the cinema to watch this unnecessary sequel. So they paid Connery $3.5 million to reprise his role even though he's barely in half the film. In the end, where did it get them? An $18.5 million loss from a $34 million budget. It's harsh, but I have no sympathy whatsoever. In 1995, Russell Mulcahy made a director's cut of the film known as Highlander 2 Renegade version for home video. This version has apparently been reconstructed with new and previously unused footage and has the origins of the planet's ice taken out and replaced with immortals being from an unspecified distant past on Earth. In 2004, the producers Peter S. Davis and William Panzer decided to do a special edition with new CGI special effects added, also with a new bit of narration from Christopher Lambert. One day I'm sure I'll see it. I can only hope that that version is in any way better than what is already a piece of... Well, let's just say, I think it's doubtful.
People go on about Tron Legacy being an unnecessary sequel that has a few plot holes of its own. That may be so. Still, it makes a hell of a lot more sense than the pile of excrement that is Highlander 2 The Quickening. If you enjoyed my video, please hit the subscribe button and press like. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, please press the notification button, as it will really help my channel out. Thanks very much guys.